Hardtail versus full sus, it's a debate we've been having for years. And I think as the bikes have got better and better, it just has become a closer and closer run thing. Exactly, especially with the proliferation of lockouts and just how well they work these days. Absolutely, but as the bikes get gnarlier and chunkier and sort of designed for smashing around, I was wondering, is, is that suspension still as useful for traction? Is a direct drive power transfer for hardtail gonna play out? We've got a climbing test today. We're gonna run them against each other, match the power and see what comes out on top. In the corner of the hardtail then, out back, the amount of travel is, you guessed it, zero millimeters. Now this is a large nuke proof scout of mine and it's got a 65 degree head angle, a 450 millimeter reach and a 1,202 millimeter wheelbase. The chain stays on this are 440 millimeters and while well, this is a 150 mil up front traveled bike, it is a hardcore hardtail to say the least. Over to you, Isaac. In the full sus corner, I've got my Canyon Spectral 29 in a medium. The reach is 455 mil in a size medium for the full sus. The wheelbase is 1226 mil and the stays are 440, while the head angle is 64 degrees. One of the biggest geometry differences, and I think what we think is gonna make a biggest difference in the climbing is the seat tube angle, which on this, it's a steeper kind of modern 76 degrees. Other bits on this bike, it's 150 mil travel on the rear. It's a 164. Right, so that's a little look at the trusty steeds of both of us. So let's get on to the first major talking point when I think it does come to climbing, because what everyone sort of jumps to is weight, isn't it? Everyone thinks, yeah. I'm going uphill, I need the lightest bike possible, right? How much does your bike weigh? This, so this bike stock is, I think it's 13.3 kilos. This bike here, it's not exactly stock, but it's very similar to a stock build. I'm reckoning it's around the 13, 7, 13.8 really? kilos. Really? Okay. Yeah, again, enduro casing tires, insert in the back. There's no carbon fancy parts. So you've got some carbon wheels, yeah. carbon cranks. You've got all sorts going on in there. This bike, however, so it is a bit heavier. The hardtail yeah. is heavier, yeah. right? Which is not, Which normally, is not normally the case. The case. No. But your bike is, pro is well over twice the price of this yes, one. Yes, very good point, Rich. <laughs> so actually, when you put it into context yeah. like that, right? You're like, mm, well, hang on. That's twice, it's not half the weight, but it's over that twice is. the price. However, the fact that the weights kind of coincide, I think actually allows us to control this test quite well because it means you can really dial down into the, the like efficiency in the ride. And that's, I think, the, the key bit for today is, is it direct drive or is it traction that's gonna make a difference climbing? Let's talk traction. Okay. Now here, you might be thinking the full size has got it, right? I think so. And I think you're probably right. Yeah, I think that ability to just absorb the bumps, use a bit of the rearward axle path, then not jolt you back. Exactly, and keep yeah. the tire contact with the ground. It's really noticeable. Yeah, especially once you get up some pace. So if you are climbing quite vigorous, vigorously, shall we say, uphill, when it does get a bit stuttery, like you'll probably see, when, you know, when you're climbing over routes like this, the back end of the hardtail is going to skip and jump. Your pedals might sort of skip in their rotation slightly as well. Yeah, and that's where the full sus does have a huge advantage, I think, doesn't it? Definitely. It just tracks that back wheel stays glued to the ground a little bit more, and you just sort of you'll you'll you will bob, which is kind of what we say you don't want. Mm. but actually climbing sometimes you sort of do to an extent right to a certain extent it's the same as ascending right exactly. or anything it does just smooth it out makes a difference on all yeah. terrain so it just means that you're always able to get the power down properly especially when it gets rougher so with all that in mind i'm just going to take five minutes for a little bit of a nerd out i think i'm going to get a whiteboard we do some maths so how much extra weight are you actually adding with rear suspension? I did a bit of market research on a few different bike brands websites looking at uh, specific price points, specific use cases of bikes to see how much does that shock and pivots actually add. For cross country, maybe you've got an air shock, a flex day, not too much extra hardware. It could be as little as 500 grams and for all of that rear travel. If you look at kind of national statistics, average weight of a person, uh, shoes, kit, everything else, maybe water bottles, spares, Combined system weight, it could be 100 kilos as a sort of reasonable median estimate. And for that extra one kilo in bike, that's 1% of your overall system. It's actually pretty small. 
Okay, so we've just been in the woods. We're talking about heavier and lighter bikes and climbing and just did a little bit of a dive into how much extra energy that actually takes if your bike is slightly heavier. And there's an important disclaimer we have to get out of the way first, which is that this uh, is very simplified. There's a lot of other aspects as per anything you talk about in physics really uh, to do with friction, rolling resistance, aerodynamics, stiffness of your frame. So when we are climbing, what the main force that we're trying to overcome is the force of gravity, which is governed by uh, basically how heavy the planet that you're on is. And uh, there's a few different sort of Newtonian laws around that. But the most important one we need to think about in terms of a force is the amount of energy that you sort of give to something if you raise it through a particular height, this is characterized by something called gravitational potential energy and it's... So we can calculate this as 9,800 joules divided by 3,600 seconds is about 2.7 watts, which is, you know, almost within the realms of sort of the accuracy of a power meter. It's really not very much at all. Um, Thank you very much, Isaac. Yes, now let's talk efficiency, everybody, because the main advantage I think people are most sort of intrigued and interested in with hardtails is that power efficiency and transfer through the pedals that they should offer. Now, there is a reason we chose these kinds of bikes. It's because they're more indicative of what the general people ride out there, I like to think anyway. So aggressive sort of hardcore hardtails, a bit more affordable, you know, you can thrash them anywhere. They're just the good do it all things. And like Isaac's riding there, sort of the mid to longer travel trail bikes. It's kind of what you see the most at trail centers, certainly here in the UK anyway. And when it comes down to hardtail versus full sus for climbing, we're talking efficiency, of course, you could make the whole cross country comparison. Now, because of that, we didn't go down that route. Cross country bikes are incredibly light and designed to be incredibly efficient regardless. So even if you bang the lockout on, my full sus XC bike doesn't weigh much more than my hardtail anyway. So that is why we've gone down this route to compare bikes that are sort of more widely used, shall we say, in more scenarios, like here in the lovely woods of Forest of Dean out on the trails, of course. So efficiency, people. Let's sort of think, why would you choose a hardtail over a full sus? And let's, I've got a good case in point here. The Cervelo I recently checked out of uh, Milan Varda at the World Cup. Now, he was riding the new Cervelo full sus cross country bike. And in the short track, they got rid of the shock and put in a sort of a, a casted piece of metal to lock out the back end, essentially. There's rules saying that you can do that. And they did that. It didn't save any weight. It didn't make the bike lighter. It just made it more efficient. There was no bob. There was no power loss through bouncing up and down on the pedals, regardless of a lockout or anything like that. It was purely to make that bike as stiff as possible and therefore accelerate as quick as possible. So it just goes to show that actually when you are looking for efficiency, that the hardtail really is almost unmatched. Now down the line, we might see Cervelo, rather than make a metal version of that strut, make a carbon version. Then it just goes to show that a global bike brand like Cervelo are placing that efficiency over bounce. Hmm. I feel some hill climbing for you is coming along. So we've got three different hill climb tests we're gonna do. We've got a steep climb, yeah. a fire road climb, and a technical climb. Now, you very kindly volunteered to do all three. I think, multiple times. Yeah, in the name of, you know, science, this has got to be, it's got to be controlled. Yep. We've got to be, repeat, it's got to be repeatable. It's got to be objective. Yes. There's all those, we we'll just dial back to high school a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so same rider, same bike. So you're going to do the riding on this bike and this bike. We've got power yep. meter pedals, so you can maintain the same power all the time as, yeah, as best near, as possible. Near as, we can, as best as know. possible. And that way we can look at times, you're gonna do it multiple times so we can maybe average out the yeah, times. Yeah, there's always a tiny bit of variability. Always, and, um, and go from there really. So I think yeah. first things first, the pedals are armed up on this bike here. There's a fire road climb behind us. Now this climb's about a good couple of minutes long. Yeah. Okay, we'll look to the start line with you and uh, I'll see good. you in a bit. Here we are at the first climb to test today. It's a smooth rolling, steady fire road, pretty even gradient all the way. I've got my bike, it doesn't fully lock out, but I've got the fork and the shot in a pedal mode because I want this to be a realistic replication of real world riding. And uh, we're gonna give it a go, ride that steady power and uh, write everything down. Yeah. 
done the full sus, I'm now on Rich's hard tail, but I've talked the pedals up, so uh, let's go do some intervals to power. Isaac. Yes. Those little legs have spun their last laps of our fire road climb. How was it on both bikes, just quickly? Oh, it was good. They, oh, it's, they feel pretty similar, yeah. honestly. The difference in the position, slightly different with the bottom bracket and the seat angle, that's the only difference. It just feels very similar, okay. honestly. Okay. Well, talking of similarities, I've got some numbers for you. Yeah. So the results are in, people. Now, the full suspension bike, which went off first, did the fire road, fire road climb sorry, in an average of two minutes and three seconds, averaging 301 watts. Yeah, that's right. Now on the hardtail, the average time was one minute 57. No, one minute 56. One minute 56. One minute 56, yes. 56 with an average of 300 watts. Too many yeah. numbers spinning around <laughs> in my brain here. So, you know, it was a good seven seconds quicker. Yeah, which, which is quite a chunk of time over two minutes. Definitely. I mean, if you think about how long you might ride up a climb normally, yeah. that adds up over the whole day as well. And 100%. then, you know, it really does add up. Now, that's a result that I don't think is hugely surprising there. No, not at all. Not at all. I think the hardtail was sort of always destined to win the yeah. Biro climb. So with that in mind, it's climb number two. Right, so as Isaac sets off for his first of many soggy runs, I want to point out that we are trying to keep things equal and sort of as fair as possible between runs. So nothing is changing on the bikes. Air pressures are remaining the same. Absolute pedals are obviously recalibrated after each run as well, and each time we swap them onto different bikes, even the amount of liquid in the water bottles. I'm not even taking a drink out of water bottles in between, so it does remain as sort of fair as we can possibly make it. But anyway, it's raining. He's heading on up there. I'm heading on out of here. Here comes Isaac then, up the first sort of choppy technical bit. Get on, son, come on. Spin those legs. Now I'm back on the full sus as the trail bike and uh, need to lay those times down to crunch the numbers. Okay, that was the tech climb done, mate. Yep. Interesting to see sort of the two bikes going at it then. I've got the numbers for you. So, mm -hmm. the hardtail did it in 148, yeah. minute 48, with an average wattage of 278. Yeah. Whereas the full sus did it in 147, yeah. so it's a second faster, with an average wattage of 280. So only a two oh, watt wow. difference so again. Really, so it's really small. We can say that's sort of negligible on the, on the average yeah. watts. Wow. Like we said, multiple runs were done and, and averaged out. Yeah. That surprises me. That is, that is surprising. I to think- be only for, a second quicker yeah, on this. I, for a number of, well, just from the theoretical point of view that we talked about, it should be traction yeah. and all that. But also how it felt to ride. Uh, it felt like a lot easier to put the power out on this and a lot more balanced and composed. I was much, I'm much like, further over the front. I felt like I could yeah. make decisions better. You're not having to work as hard, are no, you? No, it was, and, and I guess the thing with hardtails, it is really sharp and precise, but mm. it was, on the, especially on those wet routes, it was very challenging. Final climb is our steep climb. This is a fairly straightforward steep climb. It's, it's a bit loose underfoot, but it yeah. kicks, and then it kicks again at the end. So in theory here, weight should make all the difference. Right, quick disclaimer, people. The suspension setting has not changed throughout the video. So we've got it on the firm mode flicked up. So the shock is stiffened up slightly, but it's not locked out. Look, bounce. So there's still plenty of movement in the back end there. And the reason yeah. we've done that, it's not open. It's in, like I said, in the firm setting because let's face it, most of you are going to do that. If you've got a, yeah. a, a firm lever, as it were, on your shock, you're going to flick it on for the climb. So that's not changed throughout each of the climbs. Talking of climbs, get on, son. Off you go. <laughs> Oh, that's the full sus done. It's a little bit of a press on, and I uh, better get down to switch bikes and uh, keep being a scientist, keep gathering data. The 
the numbers are in. So this was our steep climb. Not particularly tech, not particularly mellow or wide or open, just some generic sort of loose ground, a couple of turns in it and a, some good steep kicks as well. Yeah. So on the full sus, the average time was 2.01, right? Yeah. With an average power of 3.40. Yeah. Drum roll please, because do we think this one, which actually on that, the, the weight was negligible because both of these bikes way fairly similar within mm, each other. We think, yeah. The Hartel did it in an average power of <laughs> 338? Yeah. 338, so only, again, a two watt difference. Yeah. Nothing to really write home about there. But the time was 152, so yeah, way big quicker. big difference, way quicker. Was that expected? To me, it was no, not, I'll be honest. I, I, honestly, because it is, and again, I keep harking on about like seat angles, is what I've said, but it feels easier on this, like easier for the same power. But just because I'm more upright, I yeah. felt more in control on that. Like I'm, I'm trying to ride to the same power. Fighting to, a little more. And it, yeah. Essentially. But, but then going faster. So it, it's, a, it's funny. I think we, I mean, we said this, I think before we did the video, yeah. hardtails are fast, but it's, hard, it's, it's tricky. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you've if you got the energy, you want to make it work, it will work. But then this is like facilitates 100%, riding well. 100%. So I would, all, I would say that to get the same out of a hardtail requires a little bit more effort and skill. Yes. But go on, no, go on, you no, go. No, no, I think so that, I mean, that's that classic, why people say you learn on a hardtail, right? Because it, it, then it, it brings those skills out of you and you really notice it and then you can sort of get the most out of that on, on the big bike. Yeah, you completely just stole what I was going to say about how people learn on a hardtail. <laughs> I've, been, I've been flummoxed, I've got no line now, right. <laughs> that's 2-1 to the hardtail though. A surprise result, some might say, others definitely wouldn't, but the scout takes it on this occasion. Look, do you want to see any more hardtail versus full sus videos? If you do, you know where to let us know in the comments, right? Yeah. Just down, they're down here somewhere. Let us know. Well, Isaac, good show today. Thank you. Good fun. Until next time, people, we'll catch you later.